What's going on, guys? Listen, in recruiting, you win some and you lose some. We've talked about the heater the Badgers have been on, but today we're going to talk about quarterback recruiting or the lack thereof. we got Justin on the show, uh, a lot of chop up with uh, USC and UCLA news as well. All that and more in today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Ryan Herring, Zero to Locked On Badgers. Thank you for joining us again uh, as we continue to build this community. Thank you for making it one of your first listens every single day. We really, really appreciate it. We got Justin Joka joining the show, um, you know, and he is not excited about quarterback recruiting. <laughs> for those of you who are listening on the podcast, and we love all of our listeners on the pod and on YouTube, Justin was just pounding his face into the desk. So he... <laughs> We are going to talk about, we're going to kick off the show, like we mentioned, uh, Lincoln Kineholtz, who really had been uh, really the last big target on Wisconsin's quarterback board, committed to the University of uh, Washington. I almost said University of Wisconsin. I almost tried to talk it into existence, like uh, LaMelo's dad. What's his name? You know, um, yeah. what I, LeVar Ball tried to talk it into existence. Um, it starts so with he, an L, I'm sure. Here's the problem. So Wisconsin struck out on their latest quarterback recruit. And there's nobody left. And just for the record, I went to 247. I went to 0 and 3. There are no other listed offers for a quarterback in this cycle except for a five star that's going to go to Oregon. So, yeah. Justin, I'm just going to kick it over to you wherever you want to go with this one. I have the same feel that I had when Greg Gard used to reach out to one kid and put him on a pedestal and say, You're our guy. You're going to be the only guy we're going to offer and then promptly watch that kid blow up and get taken away by a blue blood. We consistently would lose out and then would be sitting there and it would be halfway through the cycle and you have no relationships really built. Nobody's really ready to, you know, be taken in. My gut on this, we have this habit of making it seem like Wisconsin's far more prestigious than they are, especially at a position that we have. Recruiting staff. Yes especially from a position that historically we have not made a prestigious position at our, at our school. It's just not quarterbacks are not something that kids that you can walk into a kid and be like, you're a guy because it's like, okay, cool. I get to be the guy who throws 15 times a game when we play an overmatched opponent. You're not winning anybody over with that. Like it doesn't matter. Like the only places where that type of offer can be sent out is if you're, USC when they're good, you know, Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, they can walk into a kid's living room and say, you're our guy at quarterback. And we can't do that here. Like there's, it's not a position that you can look at and say, hey, you get to be the guy here. You get to be the guy who hands the ball off 50 times a game. Like that's just not something that kids are looking to do. And it's, it's, that's what we've been hearing back this cycle from the two guys we really wanted and we missed on Kineholds and, and Brent Braden Dorman both said that uh, I wouldn't say the Kineholds said that, but Dorman definitely did that. He didn't want to go to Wisconsin because he looked at the offense and said, this is an offense that's going to showcase me. Right. And there's people who look at that and say, well, that's not that big a deal. You know, you can, you can excel anywhere and yeah, you can excel at Wisconsin. It's possible to do but we don't have a track record of it. And we have a lot more of a track record of game managers that are throwing 10 passes a game. Like we did with eight last year at Purdue, you know, where we're just like, Oh, we're just going to lean on the run game and carry us through this. We can do that against a lot of teams. And I'm not, and I don't think that that is a good habit to get into because you can't do that against the elite teams. Even if you have a really good offensive line, if you face a really good defense that plays together, it doesn't matter. 11 guys against six is not going to work in your favor so you're suggesting overhauling the offense it feels like i'm suggesting that they need to be competent that enough drastic. that they're when we i think if they're going to talk the talk of being a 50 50 offense which i think is is fair i think when i say that you need to be 50 50 i'm saying that you can be you need to be 50 50 for the part of the game that matters if you're up three touchdowns salt go ahead away. and salt it away but until you get that type of a lead on a team it should be balanced. You should be throwing the ball as much as you're running the football, and you need to put a pressure on a defense. Wisconsin doesn't play that way. No, and I they feel need like to though, get to that. 
I feel like this this conversation is going in two directions. You're talking almost a larger philosoph- philosophical thing, and I, I I'm almost more focused just on quarterback recruiting this cycle. Yeah, and that's fair. I don't, I don't think, I, and, but but I can go any way you want to go on this one. I'm flexible. No, well, I, don't I think. think they, they need off, to go 50 50 though just just from the jump i i don't think yeah. wisconsin should go 50 50 that's fair my when we're talking site or philosophical view of recruiting my my view on it is is they need to be far more aggressive with quarterbacks mm-hmm. i think i think you there's certain positions where you can be say you're our guy outside linebacker offensive lineman you know those are positions we've have mm-hmm. historically now recruited very well you can't do that at quarterback. At quarterback, shotgun out offers, have five or six guys that you yes. feel really strongly about and and treat them all the same and it's and effectively go first come first serve on this. You know, we like all of you and hey, we would love to have you here, but we we like these other guys too and if you're not willing to commit to us then I'm sorry, we're going to have to move on because we've gotten burned way too much at quarterback. And it happened last cycle too. No, I I think you and I both feel that Burkett has some some pluses to him, mm-hmm. but he effectively was a guy we ended up offering because our board cleared, and we ended up having to go. He was a guy we felt strongly that was a solid talent that was gettable for us, and he may very well turn into a good quarterback here. But he was not a guy that was at the top of our board. No, I I think I think he was somewhere in between top of the board though, and like a Plan yeah. C guy. Like he yeah, was a solid he was, recruit for sure. He, he was a guy that let's put it this way, he, he did not receive the offers that he probably should have. Yeah, I think that's fair. I want to talk about because I, I agree with you on the other point. If you if you have a bad quarterback room, I, I think if if we're being honest and we always try to keep it real, this is not a good quarterback room in terms mm-hmm. of. Big 10, right? In terms of power five legit programs, you have Chase Wolf, who was never proven anything. And it, quite frankly, I think we know what he is. Graham Mertz was underperformed, underperformed dramatically last year. And, and nobody challenging him. And nobody challenged him. You have Miles Burkett and Deacon Hill, who Deacon Hill didn't even, I mean, again, Deacon Hill was young last year, but he didn't even travel with the team. There's mm-hmm. there's a lot of question marks here. And I'm, what I, where I'm going is dovetailing into your point. If you have a, a quarterback room that isn't very good, and you get to a point where you only have one offered quarterback on your your board. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. Like you have to you have to have multiple options. There's, at there's this no point. urgency. Um, the other issue that I have with that is there's I've heard people say like, oh, there's young talent on that. It's like, listen, I, I can appreciate you being very, you know, excited about some of the young guys we brought in, but the reality of this is this: Mertz is statistically a bottom quarter quarterback in college football. Like there's no, no other way to look at it. I think he was ranked like in the eighties or nineties and overall quarterback rating, something like that Mm -hmm. for the year. And if there's nobody challenging that and, and there's not like we heard after spring football that there's nobody that is pushing him. That is not a good room. I'm sorry. You can't you can't lean on these guys and say there's a lot of talent and there, there's there's you know a lot of potential there and say we have an awful quarterback and and those guys aren't pushing him and say that there's a lot of potential there. Now they may turn into something in a year or two, but as of right now, I, I'm gonna view the entire quarterback room as misses until we see somebody that's actually challenging Mertz. Well, I don't because- think it's fair to call. Deacon or, or Burkett a miss, but they're it's I think it's fair to say question marks, right? Well, it's at this point, question marks. We're going to have like yes, they're but question marks. They're I mean, I don't want to say that these guys can't turn in anything because that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that potential is potential until it's realized. And at this point, mm-hmm. nobody has realized anything other than Mertz, who's been bad. It's, so there's the fact that they're not challenging is problematic given the yeah. fact that he was this bad. It's also it's an issue where again to your point not to be the dead horse but it seemed like all the eggs became in Lincoln Kynold's basket. Yeah. And that let's let's even break it down one step further that that's maybe okay if he's like a five star right like he's yeah. this is a three star quarterback and it felt like all of our eggs in there and once we lost him I so I did a deep dive to try to look on Twitter look in Bobby Ingram uh, Keller Christ look at any quarterbacks they followed looked on uh, recruiting sites to see any offers. The only remotely kind of guy I found was Reese Mooney, who's a three-star kid out of Louisiana, followed Bobby Ingram. Uh, he mentioned at one point in May that he'd like to visit Wisconsin. 
My point is there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. There's there's nobody that they've been like really on yeah. top of. And it felt like once Lincoln fell through just recently, well, there's nowhere to pivot. And this yeah. is a huge class to get a quarterback because and we're late. We we're late in recruit quarterback. We're super late in the right. game. So the transfer market may be like there's there's new avenues now in college football, but like you have to bring in quarterback talent continually. You can't leave the worst position on our roster, also the most important position in football, continually understocked. This is a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we can't afford. Wisconsin is the one school that can't afford to miss because if we miss, we potentially go two or three cycles before we get anybody that is even that we feel super confident in. So like we had, we already missed a year. And it almost feels like that that's what we're on track to do again. Like the year after Mertz, we took no one. And mm-hmm. it kind of feels like that's what's going on again. And it's like, we can't afford to. We, we're to already somebody. low on terms of scholarship quarterbacks. And and I, I love the kids that we have there, but I'd much rather say we have seven mid three stars than we have three mid three stars. Because your odds are just better at hitting on someone. They um, have to get somebody. If they don't bring quarterback in in this cycle, it's a failure, period. Yeah. Even if, even if you're just flipping like a two star guy with a decent arm, you have to get somebody into the oh, room yeah. that because you don't know with quarterbacks. I, too. I like, think, well, that's that's what I was gonna say. I think that it like we we look at this and we act like quarterback recruiting is an exact science, and I just don't think it is. Like if you see guy out there that you like the physical tools of, it's I, you could take a raw kid and and have just as much a chance of turning him into it. Like I, I brought up earlier today, I was talking to somebody and I said. I'd almost like to see them take a kid at a school that isn't a power that he plays on a bad team. That's like running for his life almost because at least then, you know, he's quick and make, and he's, he's react. Mm-hmm. He's, he's making decisions. Like he's direct and saying, this is where I'm going with the ball. He's got to make those quick decisions because his team isn't good enough for him to sit back there and do it. And we so- see that all the time where these four stars are on stacked teams and they sit back there and they throw 50 touchdown passes but there's nobody in their lap. Like the, they don't the have to make quick decisions. The one thing I would decisions. say is we're still early. Like yeah. I, I, I think what 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 I'm hoping will happen, and I think this is is possible and even likely, is the Badgers shift to recruiting high school kids and they they start looking at a flip. They look at somebody. I think I think that's roster. most likely where they end up. And going. that's why we don't really have somebody else's a name. Yeah, but it could be a Ball State kid. It could be a Northern Illinois kid. You know, some just you have to add to this class or to the quarterback room. I think they'll still do it. If they don't, I think it's a failure. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's we have to get this. It would be a massive miss if they didn't add anybody. I think they will. I, I think they absolutely – because I think they will. Well, we'll they take somebody. To. I just don't have any clue what the, what we're looking at at this point because, for, to be quite frank, there's nothing that's been put out there. Like, kids put kids put their offers that's, out there all over the place. If that's why I think they, they offered, might be working on know. a flip. I think yeah. that's why they might be shifting towards a flip. Those things are a little quieter usually. Yeah. Um, we won't hear about that until likely they, they're coming over. But even a quarterback, you'd almost expect it to leak. Yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of leaks, USC UCLA didn't leak yeah. right until that was about it. Yeah, happening. no so, kidding. I, I'm actually – that's impressive to me. That is incredibly that impressive. And that's what – that's called a segue. We're going to talk about that next segment. Uh, USC UCLA coming to the Big Ten. I did a really brief um, – kind of just a really quick uh, drop on that. But we're going to get Justin's thoughts and dive into it a little deeper. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs and information. Live Vegas games, blackjack, roulette, and it's a great time to get on Bet Online. Do it responsibly. Have some fun. NFL futures are hitting. College futures are hitting. Again, we've talked about it's. If you have a feel for a team, especially with all the NBA moves recently, right? We're talking about Durant maybe moving. We're talking about. The Spurs blowing it up. The Hawks adding players. Maybe eight into the Wolves. There's tons of stuff happening. If you have a great feel on an NBA team, this is a wonderful time. Take a few dollars and put some money on somewhere. Put some money. Test your sports knowledge. Have some fun with friends. The website's super easy to use. Intuitive. There's a reason we use it on Locked On. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends and actions. Uh, bet online where the game starts. Thank you again, everybody, for making Locked On Badgers your first listen. One of your first listens every day. We really do appreciate it. We're going to bring Justin back on. We're going to talk the the really just bombshell. I, I almost want to say out of nowhere. I mean, there have been every very slight whispers at times that the Big Ten was interested in USC. But what are your initial thoughts here? USC, UCLA to the Big Ten basically I, confirmed now. Oh, it's yeah, it's been confirmed. They're in. Yeah. Um, 
they I I think you and I discussed this last year when Texas and Oklahoma went to to uh the SEC that this was the likely move. And I think we both agreed that if USC was coming, UCLA would come because yeah, they're, they're, they're brother they're and sister. Um, I, I think we knew that USC had to be the focal point of that. They're the linchpin of the entire Pac-12. You pull that, and then you can basically grab whatever you want. And I think that we what we've seen so far, this is not the end of us picking over the, the Pac-12. I think what it was is we got the biggest kind of uh, – piece out of the way and because we knew everyone else would kind of fall in line after that and start it, we knew it was going to become a, a, a land grab effectively of uh, those teams were going to freak out everyone else that was there and it would be much easier bargaining with everyone else and kind of you we could pick who we wanted at that point um i think we can both agree probably that with things being region somewhat regional as they are those teams are going to probably want to stick with UCLA and USC um, just because it gives them some flexibility. I think, I don't know how your thoughts are on it. I think that honestly, there's probably two more teams initially here. We may, we may get bigger than this. And I could see the big 10 potentially going to 20 teams Wow. and doing five yeah. team, five team groupings. So it wouldn't shock me to see us take a few more and say, all right, you're going to be our West then we'll have a Midwest or North or, you know, a South and then an East coast. Um, I don't know how that would break down. I, I think there's people throwing stuff out there. I think the bulk of it would be PAC 12 teams. Cause I think that makes the most sense. I could see us grabbing somebody from the East coast, like taking two more teams or what are we at? Six or 14 now? Uh, 14 now. So 16 okay. with these. So 16 with these two, I think we're probably looking at two to three more teams off of the PAC 12. Well, hold on. That's, our next, that, that's getting a little into our next segment a okay. little bit. What's I won't. Go, I won't dive. I won't yep. dive too in depth. What's what coming I'm up next? Is, what do you? I want. I want to say one of I the like interesting both things. These moves, by the way. Yeah, I, that's that's kind of where I, where I went earlier, and that's kind of what I, I wanted to validate with you. You know, when when Marilyn Rutgers came in, it felt like a move that on paper made sense, but everything else felt yeah. weird. Like as a fan, you looked at it and you're uh, like, why do I want this? Yeah. No. And I, you still feel like that. Like you it, still, yeah, it's, it was a business move for TV markets, right? You can, you can understand it on paper. Like if an accountant looked at that an accountant and wrote it down, it's like, Oh yeah, this makes sense. But USC and UCLA feels like a sense. It feels like that two, makes sense from a football standpoint. Two absolutely historical. Yes. Like you can't get better than adding that. Like there's there's so much history there associated with not only their rivalry rivalry with each other, but what they're how they're viewed in the college football landscape. Yep. Um, they bring basketball quality also to the conference. Um, there's a lot to like there. Both of them are baseball powers. So I mean, there's there's a lot that across the board from athletic yep. programs, they're very, very strong schools. Great jerseys. Um, the yes. script UCLA is an excellent helmet. Which actually kind of fits into the uh the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love the move. Um, I think that you, either one of them is a, a head coaching move away from being a juggernaut. It's just how it is. Like Which UCLA USC is probably just, a step down USC and I, just USC did that just did that. Yep. yep. I, I think UCLA is it there. They require a little more work, but I still think that they're a team that can very quickly jump back up with the right hire. Um, and I don't care about fan bases in the seats for these games. Like it, it, you, LA is one of those cities that it's whoever's the, the next coolest thing. And if you end up being good, you'll have fans in the seats. Mm -hmm. If, if UCLA is winning 11 games in a season, they're going to be playing to very full stadium. If USC is winning 11, 12 games in a season, they're going to have a full stadium. Why? Because they're going to be playing for the playoffs and people are going to view them as a powerhouse again. Well, let me give you let me give you two more reasons why to me this is awesome. Um, the first is it just makes it easier to recruit a powerhouse state. Mm -hmm. Not not that you couldn't go to California before. Wisconsin's done it at times. It just makes it easier. Like yeah. if they're in conference. The other thing though, and the bigger thing for me is the Big Ten media deal is coming up, and now you oh, yeah. added USC. Are you kidding me? In in a world of NIL, in a world of who has the most money, all this does is is pump cash into the mm -hmm. Big Ten. Which, by the way, is already the richest conference. Yeah. Like, it's already the richest. And this – media people are going to drool 
over the conference with Penn State, Ohio State, oh, yeah. Wisconsin, you know, uh, Michigan, USC. Are you kidding me? It, and and to be quite frank, I know we're talking about these two, but and not to bleed into the next segment, but it's expected to come through very quickly. The other, some of these other changes. So I I think that the conference has thought ahead with a lot of this in terms of who they want to add, and it's just a matter of having that those people be on board. So I will say this. Yes, it, it is pumping cash into the conference. At some point here, now you have to start looking at it, and it, and it becomes like we talk about the recruiting and everything else that's associated with it. You know, there's a lot of luxury that can go along with this, a lot of, that can be done for these schools yep. in terms of what it is. Um, it really stings some of the other schools that are being left on the outside. That's horrible right? for them. It's going to absolutely crush those conferences. Yeah, we've already seen it, right? We we mm-hmm. We've already seen the Big 12 scramble to add schools that aren't very good. Mm-hmm. to try to fill gaps that they can't fill. And we're going to see with the Pac-12. And, it, you know, you can imagine as a Wisconsin fan, what would it be like to be an Arizona fan or an Arizona State fan or an mm-hmm. Oregon State fan or, you know, any of these schools that are getting left behind? I mean, it, it's awesome being in the conference of halves and, quite frankly, yes. being one of the upper echelon teams in a conference of halves. You know, Wisconsin well, is the fourth or fifth best program in the Big Ten on the low end. Well, and and I think everyone was concerned, like was tired of hearing how bad the West was. Well, these teams are likely headed into the West. So Ooh, that's going to be into some our balancing. Next segment. I'm, I'm curious where how you think this is going to balance out. I want to jump into that next. I don't know if it's going to be. I I don't know if it's going to be a ge- geographical. I'll just say that because hmm. I don't know. I mean, there's there's something to be said for just kicking a team over, but I don't know if UC, USC is that strong yet that you look at them and go well. You know, they're the Ohio State of the West yet either. Because we kind of felt the same way about Nebraska when they came in. They were meant to be that, for sure. Mm-hmm. They were meant to be the balancer. And Wisconsin mm-hmm. has murdered them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up next, we are going to, since I can't keep Justin from talking about what happens yeah. next. Coming up next, yeah. we are going to talk a little bit about what happens next. Well, who do we think our, our other schools, the Big Ten, might target? What makes sense? How do we want the division aligned? Do we want pods, divisions? All that coming up, we're just going to do kind of a, a surface level skim on it. But first, today's show is brought to you by the following sponsors. Thank you again, as always, for making Lockdown Badgers your first listen every day. Uh, bring Justin back into the show. All right, let's talk a little bit about what happens next. So USC UCLA coming in by 2024 is what is being reported. Do you think the Big Ten, which had already been on the track to scrap the divisions, right? That had already been mm-hmm. kind of thrown out there, and I think it was happening. How do they how do they do this now? Do they go into pods? Do they go back to divisions? Sure. I, I think it will actually go to pods. If they if they're gonna do it smart, you you play your own pod, you grab another one, and then you want to have some rivalries or whatever that you think are a good idea to play outside of that. I I, I honestly don't know what the perfect is because right now we at, we're at what nine we're games? Four, yeah, nine so we're at nine in conference, conference games, 14 teams. So if you go, you add the two years, 16, you could do four 14 pods, essentially. You yep. play everybody so play in a pod, your... everybody in another pod, and then one protected rivalry, and then the other pod could could rotate around. That would give the, you nine conference the games. The problem with that is the protected rivalry is already likely to be somebody in your pod. Like, they, could just be you're, not gonna spl- you're not going to split up Ohio State and Michigan. They'll probably still be in a pod. Um, would, that's would they, where though, things... If, if they just give them a protected rivalry, I don't know. Like if you just made Michigan Ohio state a protected rivalry, I don't think it matters what pod they're in. Yeah. So here's, here's something to think about. I think this might be a, a like more likely possibility here. Do you think it's possible? We just jump to 18 after this. Like, I think we may legitimately add two more teams yet. I think Washington is very likely to come because I think I could see the big 10 saying we want that Seattle media market. I don't think Washington um, would come without Washington State, unless that's your. Do you, I, I don't think, think so. I, I'm curious to see how how intertwined they are. It's hmm. you. You could be right, but you you and I both know Oregon would would walk away from. Oh yeah, oh, Oregon State in, his, in a Oregon second. doesn't even know who Oregon State is. <laughs> <laughs> Although I I shouldn't say that they they do have a, an annual rivalry game, yeah. which you can still play out of conference. By the yeah. way, Iowa Iowa State play every year. Like yeah. that, that's totally doable. I think there's going to be two. There's going to be a couple of teams from the Pac-12 that we grab yet. I don't know who they are, but it sounds like there's been kind of whispers that teams are aggressively now oh, I'm sure coming at the Big Ten 
to be like, wait, don't leave us behind because now two of the linchpins of the conference are gone and they're like, oh, we have to go somewhere. We don't want to go to the Big 12. And the SEC is probably not looking for us. Like the, the biggest part pieces that the SEC would want are would gone. likely be USC. Oregon. Maybe, maybe. Oregon. I that's don't like that. That's such a weird fit but that's, for the Southeastern Conference. Well, because it's not a money fit. Like you're you're banking on Oregon. Like you can't bank on a team being good forever. And that's the problem. Because mm-hmm. if Oregon falls off, they don't have the alumni base and they don't have the media market in that that's area true. to be worthwhile to carry around. And if they're bad, which if you this here's the thing that's going to happen. When you keep dumping good teams into a conference, parity is going to happen because you're going to have more games against better opponents, which is going to lead to more losses across Mm -hmm. the board. So some of these teams are going to drop, which is why last year when you and I talked about Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC, it's like, congrats, you guys are going to go from being the kings of a conference to likely being like second third fourth in a division wait 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 wait. we can't call texas the king of even a bad conference yeah this, Come on this now. is true. oklahoma but but the historically historically <laughs> right right i get you <laughs> which is what i'm what i'm speaking to and it's like you guys are about to get curb stomped in a new conference where you're just not the king of the hill anymore yeah you're like, not the bully. alabama alabama is the king of the sec and, and that ain't changing Bama, even Georgia. if you guys come there yeah, yeah. You're, you're not the bully anymore mm-hmm. uh you know it's it's interesting to me because I, I really actually do feel for the, especially like the Pac-12 schools who oh, are yeah. academic schools. There's a lot of history there. That, and that I, it, it really stinks. Those to schools, even if they them. had an exit ramp to the SEC, like that's not a conference that fits their culture. No. Stanford? Oh, God, no. No. They, well, they, Stanford, Stanford wants to come to the Big Ten now. Oh, absolutely. No, there's Cal? no doubt in my mind. I don't know. Does <laughs> Okay, so right now we're in a down period for Stanford, right? They're mm-hmm. they're a mediocre Pac-12 team, effectively. They now we know that they have a capability of jumping up and being a good team. Like they're they're effectively an Iowa, Wisconsin type team, you know, with with a little bit more pop to them, just because they're located in California from a recruiting mm-hmm. standpoint. So they're a team that their peak is probably about what Wisconsin is, but their their downside is their floor being, is lower. Yeah, their floor is lower. So you look at it and you're like, okay, is, do we want this? Because the, the likelihood is somewhere in the middle. And if that's a, a team that's roughly going to be between Iowa and Northwestern on a traditional basis. Yeah. Not excited. Great academic school, right? Yes, the Ten, and that's the, the profile. That. that is the part that the Big Ten may look at and say, the Big Ten digs you're that. worth us bringing in from an academic standpoint because you're extremely prestigious. Mm-hmm. There's – they have the what the biggest endowment of any non Ivy League school probably in the country. It's they're going to check boxes, but still, yeah. you probably get most of the California viewership with USC, yeah. UCLA. Yeah, and you do. Right? I agree with that. So if you're looking for really expanding into markets, I mean, you could definitely look into the ACC. They've done that before. You could definitely say Georgia Tech has the always problem, been the person. The problem with the ACC is their media deal. And they are locked in, I believe, for a prolonged period of time. I don't know what the buyout is to that and how likely it is something like that can happen. And that's because that's that's kind of what I was talking about with going East Coast. Like, who would you want off the East Coast if you were going to? Like, in a perfect world, you probably want to grab Miami. You'd probably go after... Do you want Miami, though? You want the Florida media market. That's that's what you're playing for. And I don't, I'm not necessarily sure that they're, they're... They fit the SEC, I think, more than they fit... Yeah, that feels like us. a very odd fit for the big but, team. But I could see like that's that's the that's the reason you take them is that you're taking the media market. Um, I think honestly, if we're looking at teams that fit, and I don't know, and you and I have kind of discussed how we don't necessarily love them. I think Virginia fits kind of like a from an academic slash somewhat old school um yeah fit from that standpoint i mean they have basketball even though they they kind of it's just weren't... such another garbage football team to it add is. though from the east coast like you've added rutgers maryland what I mean, about who, georgia who tech because want... you get atlanta atlanta is a gigantic but market they, they're, they're, they're they also garbage really but, if, but if you're telling me georgia and they don't tech move or for virginia, basketball either yeah but if you're telling me georgia tech or virginia i would for, rather from get atlanta. a from a media market standpoint yes if we're looking at it from an overall athletic program i'd take virginia 
Yeah, but I don't think the Big Ten looks at it like that. Outside of like USC, like well, I think there's, a, I think there's Maryland. a balance. I think there's a balance. Like if you're, yeah, if you're saying Clemson over any of them, like the sure. Big Ten would gladly take that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What about Florida State or Miami? I just think there's been so much negative pub that's come out of Florida State that I, I have a hard like both of them. Both like of they're them, they're right? both of them are like so dirty. something that that we really look at and we're like, do we really want to hitch our way into the two schools that are known for bending rules and having poor academic scandals and things like that? Which so why don't we just stay in the left coast? Why don't we do Washington and I, I I think there's a possibility. I think Washington, I think I think like I know we're not high on it, but I could see Stanford being pulled in. But does Stanford mm-hmm. come without Cal? Do you think they're tied? I don't know if they're that tied. I, there are some I honestly schools don't. that are really going to get left out on the dance floor in this one. They are. And that's like, unfortunate. Like, yeah. Like, I feel I feel bad, honestly, for Utah, who is a program that has really come around in the last five years. Yeah, they built five themselves years, up. But I don't know if they have enough to offer from a viewership standpoint or even from a outside of football standpoint to say – you really move the needle with us. No, I'd be I'd be stunned if Utah. Like if they went into that area, they would they would go for Colorado, right? To get Denver. Do you think a school potentially like Baylor would be mm, worth I, it? I don't right? think Baylor. There's been a lot of negative things. Yeah, I was gonna say I, well not even just Baylor, that dating back to the basketball. Yeah, stuff that I think, happened back I think the there would be zero chance for Baylor. God love Dave Aranda. Um yeah. there would be <clears throat> zero well, that's chance it, there. I, if, if if this was 15 years down the line, I think it would have a better chance at it. It's just everything's too fresh. And and quite frankly, I don't think that market moves the needle. I don't think that program moves the needle. It's full of scandals recently. Yeah. Our Bryles did, did everything he did there. I think that thing is a dumpster. I just fire. think athletically they're 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 moving in the very much the right direction. But you just made the point with Oregon that you can't base yeah, it on. I agree. That. So, well, I, 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 that being said, I do think there's a chance they take Oregon because there's a lot of money associated with that yeah, school. I, well, I would say Oregon before Baylor. Yeah. All right. I think we're just rambling at this point. Um, kind of, which is awesome. That kind I of mean, the point of the show was like, this just happened and we're still processing. Yeah. And I oh, think for that's sure. important. But, I, I just um, don't, I think I will be, I will, man, I, I want to say this before we, we finish up. I think it's more likely they jump to 18, but from a, a standpoint of being simple for them to work with it, it's it's better to stay at 16 from how it breaks down. Yeah, because you can't really high. do three divisions of six and make it work out. Huh? No, you can't because you can't just play an entire another group. You'd have to round robin it in some way. Yeah. No, I think I think 16 works really well as a number. Um we're going to have a lot more on this, everybody that's yeah. listening. There's a lot I, of stuff that hasn't happened I'm yet. really excited to, to get some USC, UCLA folks on, to talk to them. Um, Justin, certainly you're, you're free to jump on the show, and, and when we get those people on to talk with us, get a three-way, kind of just a roundtable type discussion there. Uh, so everyone, they appreciate you listening. I had a, had a bit of a sore throat today, but I powered through like Leo Chanel. I take no reps off. <laughs> and uh, we're going to continue getting everybody just great content. So appreciate everyone tuning I in. I feel like you've just insulted Leo. <laughs> no, I compared myself to Leo. I'm, we're on the same. No, we're not. Um, <laughs> when you're done here, everybody listen to uh, Locked on Big Ten. Nate Dickinson is the local expert. Brings in all the stuff from all across the Big Ten to get you caught up in everything happening in the conference. Really appreciate everybody tuning in. If you enjoy the show, if you enjoy Justin, leave, leave a comment, leave a like, leave a review. You know, subscribe to it. Really appreciate it. Until we talk to you again. Uh, peace, guys. Hope you... Have a great 4th of July weekend if we don't get a chance to talk to you before then.